Hello there, and welcome to part four of the Hollow Knight Steel Soul Run. And I forgot, in the King's Pass, there is a charm that you, you, you can pogo to in the beginning of the game. Which basically is like the Fury of the Fallen, which gives you, like, 75%, I forget the exact value, but it's quite a bit, actually, of a percentage for when you just have one mask left. It gives you a little boost and damage, which is pretty nice for a charm. And this is where the fast-forwarding happens. In this part, we're going to be encountering the, um, tombs- Like, I forgot the name of that. The tombstone area? And then some other area. Like the- Oh yeah, the edge of the kingdom. But that's going to be a bit later on. First, I'm going to be buying some new charms, which are pretty- Well, first I'm getting a, um... A vessel fragment, I believe it's called, to aid me on my quest. You know, to be honest with you, I don't really like it whenever one of my friends is a friend with an enemy. Like, I try to be the best friend I try to be, but... If there's somebody who corrupts other people, why be friends with them? That's my big question to those who have friends that are corrupting other people. Like, I've seen rational people get corrupted by this one person. He used to be a really rational person, then he started saying stupid stuff like I'm going to expose you Shane and I'm like I don't act like that anymore but yeah there's a vessel fragment here just laying around if you look for it very carefully like I'm not salty about it I'm just slightly disappointed in my friend right now but first, I'm going to be buying some charms. Which are pretty nice to have. Like, the more charms you have, the more charm notches you can buy. And charm notches are really good since it allows you to use more charms. Which means you can be more overpowered in combat. Also, I'm a bit tired right now. Also, you have to have the, um, crystal heart to get to the lake area. To my knowledge. I think it's possible to go to the, um, tombstone area with the lamp. Like, there's an area in the crystal peak where you fall into the area, like, the tombstone area. Like, the resting- oh, the resting grounds, that's the name of it. Like, yeah. Basically, you just go to the resting grounds by heading to the right in the lake by just either swimming very slowly or using the crystal heart to just dash all the way to the other side. Now, once you go in the resting grounds, you could either go to, like, a, like, um, tram, I forget. Like, it's another way to the City of the Tears, but it's in the other half that's blocked earlier in the game. Or you can head to the top left to encounter these tombstones. Since the guardians want to stop you from waking them up, they're like, oh, you're going to sleep now forever. Which is kind of sad. Like, I feel bad for the night a bit because it's like, oh, we just went, it's time to go to sleep forever now, bud. Like, they actually trapped them in the dream realm, which is more of a spiritual thing than a mind thing. 
Like, maybe their wills are just left on the in general area. I don't know. But it's more spiritual than anything. But if you try to escape this area, you'll just be teleported back until you until you meet the seer, a moth that advises you out of here by giving you the dream nail after you do some platforming. Which allows you to read the minds of the locals and also the enemies of the game, but most of the enemies if you dream nail them they say like a verb like the husks maybe say kill or something. And some of the creatures you dream nail just say breed or kill or hungry. But the seer is a very interesting character in the game because she doesn't really see the radiance as a um, a villain per se, but more of a misunderstood um, person or bug. She sort of implies that the Pale King did more wrong, if I remember correctly. But I, ha I do have some questions on why she's helping. Like, maybe she didn't know about the vessel experiments and she just noticed that you were trapped. Mm. But basically, to get the true ending, of, well, the good ending, because the other endings are considered bad because the infection just comes back in like a couple years, maybe when the Hollow Knight grows, grows up again. And like, the problem with the vessels is that they have a will to live. Like, you'll notice later in the game, it's like, no will to live, or no will to break. And these vessels seem to have some sense of a will to live since they all learn how to fight and you see two vessels in two different locations one in the hollow nest that we actually saw after like during the hornet fight and one in the abyss that's infected there are charms located here that are for the, um, the Halloween patch, the, um, Grim Trope content pack, which is nice. Like, I believe it's, like, Weaver Song, Grim Child, Dream Shield, and I forgot the other one. Now, there's some enemies in these tombs. There's these tomb and tomb husks that do two masks per hit. I actually died to these guys on another soul run and I was kind of salty about it. You know, but I didn't give up. I continued to do the soul runs until I managed to win. But you have to be very careful in this area because there's a lot of stuff that wants to kill you and, it, and everything in here kills you pretty quickly since it do, does double the mask damage. Like, yeah. Uh, Like, I honestly think, if you have, like, if you, if you have a friend that is friends with somebody you don't like, you just ignore that person. Like, you don't, like, judge them based off of their poor friend-making choices. But you just let them be with them and let them decide. Because maybe you should find somebody better to be friends with, with, if... That person is friends with your enemy. But you know... Like, I was raised... To love everyone and... Like... I'm going to forgive my enemies if they ever come. But some people just want to see you... Die, it's just... Some people want to corrupt other people. And their actions speak louder than the person they are. But in a sense, if they're corrupting people, they're deeply troubled inside. 
So I would suggest just ignoring those people, and if your friend who is friends with that person shows any tendencies of violent personalities, you just stand back, don't judge, and try not to hate. And I guess you should be good. But honestly, whenever I see a friend like this, I'm disappointed. I'm very disappointed. I'm not mad or angry or filled with hatred. I'm just sitting here like, why? But yeah. That's what I'm thinking about right now. At like 4.27 p.m. So let's see. So shall we? There's also a um, stag station in the the um, resting grounds, which allows you to change charms very quickly. There's also the Soul Eater charm that gives you more soul per nail hit, which is actually pretty nice. Like the Spell Twister allows you like one extra spell, and the Soul Eater allows you to use two extra spells. But each of them are worth different amounts of um, notches. Like, I wouldn't suggest having them in the same inventory, like, in the same, like, set or something. So, yeah. Yeah, you'll sort of realize in life that betrayals don't really happen from your enemies at all, but, you know, from your best friends and stuff. Maybe I'll find a good way of dealing with it, but, you know, my go-to is just ignoring that person until they realize how bad the other person is. At this point, we meet Xero, who's who's a traitor. Reminds me of someone. He tried to kill the king and died, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna challenge you to a duel." A duel, a duel, a duel, a duel, a duel. This guy is pretty easy to deal with. He just throws some um, nails at you. And they're, they're telegraphed by, the, like, they just go back a bit and then aim at where you were a couple of seconds ago. And then they will come back. You can heal in the two corners of the arena, by the way. So if you're having a bit of trouble, like, I usually bum rush this guy, and then he dies. Or I just heal in the corner. And then it's all good and dandy. You know? At one point, once his HP gets low, he will summon two more nails, and he'll pretty much do the same thing with them. You can bum rush him pretty easily to beat him. But otherwise, he isn't that hard of a boss to beat. So, yeah, he's not... Too bad, per se. Once you get the dream nail, you can dream nail these stumps. Or, what, or these little trees, I don't know. And then they sort of like emit essence, or dream particles. Which you collect them. And if you have enough, you can get the true ending. It takes like 2 point, like 24,000. I mean, 2,400 of these to get the true ending. Like, you have to get the Awoken Dream Nail. And then, you should... Then you're able to get to the ending, the true ending of the game. But you also fight dream version of bosses, which are harder versions of older bosses. There are some original dream bosses that appear in the real world. Lucani! Cool. 
once you have a hundred, you can go to the seer, and then she'll give you something as a reward, ah. like a hollow nest seal. I really love how you can crystal heart around. Coming up soon is a really cheap strategy I found for fighting the really big husks. These things are hard to kill, but this one is particularly easy to kill because you can just stand in the corner and swipe upwards and it will keep on turning where you're at. Like, it will look at the relative location you are and then it will turn back repeatedly and then it will just die. It's, it's kind of sad, it's like, oh, I'm the hardest guy to kill in the game. But basically this pathway gets you to the other side of the City of Tears. Which is interesting since you can encounter some other enemies. You encounter some, like, hidden husks. One type runs in a direction, sometimes away from you, sometimes towards you. There's another type of husk, like the brawling husk that swipe that swipes at you with its fist. And then there's the third type that's the gluttonous husk, which pretty much jumps at you and hurts you with its body. Which is kind of sad when you think about it. Imagine it's just sad when you use your body as a weapon. The, the most um, um, fat enemies in games have like a shockwave attack or something whenever they collide with the ground again, which I find pretty mm, odd. But whatever. I tried to go into the arena early on, but I realized you can't get there without breaking the wall on the other side. If you go up here, you'll encounter the time that I nearly died at in this playthrough of this Steel Soul Run. This is where you get a um, soul fragment and you get pretty much dogpiled by a bunch of different husks. And I nearly die here actually which is kind of sad when you think about it even at a little slow-mo for the part that's coming up really soon wow that was pretty close and you get a um soul i believe a yeah soul fragment for your effort so yeah like, this person I'm talking about isn't that person from Parasite Test. Like, I may have hinted at that earlier, but no, it's someone who I hold more dear. But I respect that person. So I... But I'm just going to ignore that person until the... Until they realize that that person they're being friends with is really corrupt. And I hope that person doesn't get corrupted by that other person. I guess I'll have to see. But I do find it really, like, disloyal for one of your friends to just be friends with one of your enemies and just defend them, you know? Like, if you're friends with someone, they should be able to hold to your back and when you say, this guy tries to corrupt other people and you shouldn't be with that person, I feel like that you shouldn't be... Like, you should respect and love the enemy, but you shouldn't have the enemy right next to you because iron sharpens iron, you know? If, if you're friends with somebody who corrupts other people, then you'll just end up becoming the person he was. So yeah, you should love everyone, 
but hate their actions that are negative. If you see what I mean. Like, that's sort of how I'm gonna do it. Because, you know, that's how life is. There's a bunch of things you can do that are stupid, out of rage and hatred, that some of the 4chan, like, people do. And there's some actions you can do that are more de decisive that you can do that don't burn bridges forever and I feel like I'm gonna go for the decisive choice by just ignoring and waiting. Patience is a quality that's lost by most people in this society because of them being raised by the the internet. Like, some parents give their kids, like, a phone really early in life. And then they d they're just like, why are you so attached to that? It's kind of sad when you think about it. But that's today's life. Everything's trying to distract you from doing the right thing. Every source. And every article. And everything is distracting you. Welcome to the future! Ah, the kingdom's edge where we meet the elder Aspid. You want to meet an enemy that's imbued with the most evil satanic power in any video game? Then the primal Aspid is probably your pick. Yeah, but there's also the bigger, badder flying enemies that cannot harm you unless you run into them. And then there's the, um, jumpers. I forgot what they're called exactly, to be honest with you. Like they're hoppers or something? Yeah, but it's really interesting. Because in this area you can fight Hornet for the second time, but I think I just go up here to just go to the arena, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Let me see into the future. Yeah, for this part, I'm just going to be going to the arena. And that's probably where, like, where a lot of the, the footage comes in for this part. But yeah, it's really weird. Somebody was asking me just recently on Discord if they wanted me to help them convince Luminous, the old Kerrigan survival creator, to give Dev to Impossible or Impossible, which is a guy who's the best player of Kerrigan survival in pretty much Europe, which is pretty much in the world because Europe has more people playing Kerrigan survival, so what can you do? And yeah, he's competing against two other people, I believe he said, um, Final Blade? Let me see. Yeah. He said Final Blade and Tor, who he's competing against. Now this is a different Tor. This Tor is the is the guy who made the map file for Kerrigan Survival. And he's telling me, oh you should help me convince people, and he gave me an invite link to the Kerrigan Survival Community Discord. I might join to see how everyone's doing. I don't know. I just uninstalled StarCraft 2 so my opinion doesn't matter. But I just told him that if he wants to make something that sort of stands the test of time, he should just go to like the Unreal Engine 4 and make his own game. Yeah. I might join the Kerrigan Survival Discord 
Well, let's see, yeah. Like, some of the people are pretty nice. And back to the game a bit. Primal aspects are a bit weird, because the dodger attack, you have to sort of strafe to the left or the right. And you have to do it to a certain degree, so you don't get sniped. And if you try to downwards, like, pogo off of them, they will probably hit you. These things probably ended a lot of no-hit runs just because of their mere existence in the game. But yeah. You know, Kerrigan Survival is a pretty decent StarCraft 2 game. The only, like, the biggest problem with it is that there's too much crutches. Like, Luminous, the creator, added a... added KFC, which was a after-death class that could summon towers that could protect, like, a base or a fortress very easily. And then he added Ghost Nova, which is essentially a stalemate breaker, which is the biggest crutch of them all. So, you know, I'm gonna just join that Discord and see what it's all about. And wow, it's, it has everything. Kinda wish I didn't uninstall StarCraft 2 now. But, yeah. Like, my old friend Maximine is in that Discord. Like, I used to have a clan on StarCraft 2 called... Um, Pro Carry S, which was basically the clan where I cherry picked the best users, and that like all of them were pros, and that was sort of the big deal with it. So yeah. I'm surprised Leave Me Alone is sort of taking the mantle for the Discord. Like, I'm really surprised he's doing it. I'm surprised the creator of the game isn't the, the big head honcho that's holding everything together. Yeah, but I see a lot of familiar faces. Like, there's Lom and Luminous. There's also Ken, who isn't Keeneth. Like, that guy... Like, he used to be called Keeneth until he changed his name to I Farm Noobs. And that's what he did whenever he played a game of Kerrigan Survival. I might make a video about my past of SC2. Maybe... So let's see, it's about 7 minutes in right now. Like, I record these in different sessions. So I might be in a different mood whenever I'm playing it or not. But I'm headed s straight for the arena right now. Like, I believe in the next part I go fighting... Like, I go to fight Hornet. The second Hornet fight isn't too bad. The biggest problem with with it is just she attacks faster and she's a little bit more aggressive, but she isn't too bad. I just bum rushed her in the next part I think. Oh wow. This, um, Discord is surprisingly not cancerous. Like, usually, when you see a StarCraft 2 Discord, like, the old Parasite Test Discords were really, really cancerous. Okay, I think I got to the, uh, arena by now? Now, basically, you pay to join the arena matches. 
the um, prices aren't too hefty. I believe the last one's 2k though. But that isn't too bad at this point of the game. The arena introduces some interesting enemies, like this enemy that has a shield and a sword and sort of acts like the Moss Knights. They swing their sword and they block you if you do it, like if you pogo off of them. The only problem is, is that whenever they attack, they allow a big opening for you to fight back and counter attack. And it, and later on, it introduces a slug enemy that just has a nail. Well, later it, it just introduces bigger and much more durable roly poly enemies. Just remember, strafe left, hit them, or just strafe in the opposite direction they're rolling at you at. And just counter attack whenever they're a good distance away while strafing, and you should be good. This is a big challenge run. Like, it's sort of like a gauntlet. Also, it introduces, like, these enemies that act like the miners, but they're bigger, like, they're fatter, and they have these little, like, kunai nails that they throw at you and they also use to hit you but you can you can actually hit back their lobbed projectiles it's really easy to do that and it encourages you to do that and they you can heal while they attack in most cases and of course they have a primal aspid queen just laying around somewhere you know like all Colosseums do, they have demonic forces. And primal aspids are not fun to fight. Whoever, whoever thinks primal aspids are fun to fight are clearly mentally questionable. Because I guess they could be fun because you strafe around them a bit. But you know, they're not fun to fight. Like, the game forces you to fight these in tight corridors with the roly-poly enemies. And it's just... It's just a carnival of attrition. You also fight the bigger mosquito enemy. Later on. Like, I'm just saying this stuff a bit later on. Like, let's see. Yeah, I'm a couple minutes into the future, aren't I? I'm just mentioning what all these enemies do. And basically this is a um, gauntlet match. You just keep on enduring. And you heal. Like, you need to have max health if you want to be safe. But most, like, you can actually do this with the Fury Charm and just mow or mow down enemies. Like, you're mowing grass for money. So yeah, I think I discussed everything. At the end you at the end of this you encounter two brother mothers. And I believe like the last one gets more aggressive if you kill the other one. And that's pretty much it. I think that's all that needs to be said about this arena match. You also fight against infected brothers as well that drop little infection projectiles below them. So you want to strafe around them. Like there's a section where it forces you to fight them when they're on top of you and you can't really go off of them. Also, something to note is that whenever the arena has spikes on it, you can kill airborne enemies by pogoing them into the spikes, which is pretty cool and pretty satisfying, if I can say so myself. You know, I'm really enjoying Hollow Knight, though. It's a very well-paced game in terms of both story and gameplay. Like, every battle in this has a rhythm to it. I just realized that being on the um, Kerrigan Survival Discord, that some of Impossible's buddies are banned, like, 
final blade spanned, and I'm like, this is a bit odd. Yeah, but I'm just telling someone about Super World 3, which I am going to be showing on this channel because I recorded all the footage for that game. And that was a really enjoyable game where you had to manage, like, power and elevation. But yeah, it's pretty much like a power defense game with different elements to it. Like, if you ever heard of the Grey Goo Theory, it's basically where you, like, the Grey Goo Theory has a, has a doomsday theory where basically micro-machines are able to replicate themselves by using carbon, and since carbon makes up most of the earth and some other materials, in about like a day they would take up all the oceans, and then another day they would take over the entire earth. So yeah. So basically you're using towers to defend against this liquid menace while destroying the emitters. And there's also some other elements, like there's these like ceilings that sort of act as conductors from which the um, great group can go through. And it's a very fun game and has a very cool lore to it, which I'll get to when I start playing that game. But yeah. The first arena though isn't like too bad. It's it's really easy. The um fool's one is actually pretty hard, but it's like an endless gauntlet of like platforming challenges and fighting enemies within those platforming challenges. Like the last one has these little jumping enemies that sort of like jump at an arc and then fly down. Like, later in the Queen's Garden, we'll encounter a less aggressive variant of that type of bad enemy. But yeah, that's one of the things that makes the final arena pretty hard, if I say so myself. But I can't wait until I get the Creeper World 3. That was a fun game. And this arena is just about to be finished, only like a couple seconds left. You just fight against two Grezzer Mothers. And Grezzer Mothers aren't too bad to dodge. Also, I believe these have like a bit more health points than the regular variant. So, yeah, and also the other one will get angry if you kill one of the Grezzer Mothers, making it more aggressive. Like just a wee bit, but as long as you strike each of them equally, they will both go down in the same time. And you get a big reward for actually beating the two brother mothers. You even you get a bunch of geo, and you also get a charm notch for your difficulties. Well, yeah, you get a little cheer, and then we're out of here.